Uh, hi, everyone. I am Mei Xu Chen, uh, a research fellow at Consumer uh, Data Research Fellow, a Consumer Data Research Center and Department of Geography in UCL. And thanks so much for having us uh, to showcase our current work here. Uh, today, I'll co-present with my colleague, Bing, uh, to show you how to use uh, CDRC linked consumer registers data to understand uh, social and residential mobility. Uh, the overall content will be divided into four parts. Uh, I'll start with a brief introduction about the linked consumer register data, uh, the motivation and aim to use this data in our mobility research, and then explain uh, the entire process on how to uh, link multiple data set uh, with link consumer register data. Uh, after that, I and Bing will introduce two case studies separately uh, for the use of uh, link consumer registers to under understand mobility. Uh, since Joanna has introduced uh, link consumer registers data, uh, I'll just recap a little bit on it. Uh, so. Uh, link consumer register data was firstly created by our colleagues uh, in uh, 2019, which is a CDRC secure data set. Uh, it contains the names and addresses for adults in the whole UK uh, in annual basis that cover uh, 20 years from uh, 1997 to uh, 2016. Uh, it was compiled from a reported output uh, from linking public versions of the electoral row and consumer registers. Uh, it covers almost all adult population at an individual level. And recently the new version is available up to 2020 uh, on our CDRC website and will be continually updated every year. Uh, the detailed information will not be uh, presented here uh, you could refer to this published paper for more information. Uh, so the LCR data we use based on uh, the linked UPRN version, uh, the total size of the data uh, we used contain uh, 32 million unique register entries. Uh, it mainly has four variables, uh, including addresses, uh, names, entry year, and exit year. Uh, address UPRN uh, refers to uh, unique property reference numbers. Uh, each UPRN is a unique number uh, consists of up to 12 digits in length for each property. Uh, this was created for uh, Great Britain. Uh, so Great Britain includes England, Scotland and Wales uh, by owner survey. And entry year means uh, the first year the person was recorded at the address. And exit year means uh, the last year the person was recorded at the address. Uh, so the bottom table shows how the data uh, would look like. So uh, we can take Bing as an example. Uh, so Bing was first recorded at an address UPRN in uh, 2012 and then first recorded at another uh, address UPRN in 2015. Uh, this can be seen as being moved from one property uh, with address UPRN ends with uh, 891 to uh, another one ends with uh, triple zero. Uh, this formed an origin and destination flow uh, which enable us to build our application on it uh, to, res uh, to the mobility research. Uh, LCR data have uh, two main advantages. So firstly, it could capture uh, individual level data. Uh, and secondly, uh, the frequently updatable population structure every year. Uh, so it will fill in the gaps that currently available data failed uh, to detect continuity of uh, residence in particular years. So for example, uh, uh, Traditional census data is only updated every 10 years. Uh, that cannot capture uh, population data at individual level and update frequently. 
Uh, so uh, LCR data could be used for uh, the social good if linked with other social data. Uh, this can help us better understand uh, neighborhood changes at any scales uh, and social spatial implications. Uh, possible applications could include uh, analyzing population flows uh, based the origin destination uh, information or social deprivation mobility uh, or housing career transitions or further uh, geodemographic changes. Uh, so this is a workflow of our uh, entire linkage process. Uh, we linked different administrative data to LCR uh, data through different uh, geographic units. So the left side linked LCR at a uh, common lower layer uh, super upper area level. So that's uh, LSOA level uh, from a postcode a directory lookup table uh, created by uh, ONS, so uh, Office for National Statistics. Uh, through this linkage, we have a linked uh, social deprivation to understand uh, the social mobility pattern. Uh, the right side linked LCR at common uh, UPRN from uh, address-based premium data created by uh, Ordner Survey. Uh, through this linkage, we have a total uh, floor area to understand the residential mobility pattern. Uh, next, I'll show you the case study uh, related to social mobility and Bing will introduce uh, the detailed process at the right side of this flowchart. Uh, so first, uh, one application of LCR is to uh, analyze and visualize population mobility flows uh, based on origin destination information. And this map shows uh, inter-local uh, authority level origin destination population flows in England uh, for better visualization. So only flows larger than uh, 700 population are pre uh, presented here. Uh, the thickness of lines uh, represents uh, the number of movers, uh, thicker lines indicating higher uh, population flows. And we can see from the map that uh, the majority flows uh, aggregated around uh, London and uh, Northwest, but uh, the flows in the North of England are relatively slow, uh, relatively low. Uh, so this is an uh, alluvial plot shows a change in IMD deciles of movements between origins and destinations by uh, LSOA level in uh, England. Uh, so IMD is an uh, index uh, that measures social deprivation uh, for small areas. Uh, the larger IMD score, uh, the more deprived are the areas. Uh, so here, deciles one to 10 uh, range from the most deprived to uh, the least deprived areas. Uh, so the lines connect deciles from origins to destinations and represent the percentage of uh, population movers. Uh, the thicker line uh, represents a greater change in social mobility. Uh, the population at decile one uh, and decile 10 uh, tend to uh, remain at uh, the same deciles while residents living from uh, the central, while uh, the residents living uh, from the central deciles, uh, for example, deciles uh, three to uh, seven uh, present more diverse uh, patterns, uh, but it's hard to say how they changed between uh, different deciles from this uh, map, uh, from this plot. Uh, so our ongoing work is to uh, create an index to show how the social deprivation changed uh, during 20 years time period. Uh, so take London as an example. Uh, we used a uh, harmonized 2019 IMD uh, to show uh, the changing IMD for residents moving uh, out of London uh, to other areas uh, in Great Britain by LSOE level. Uh, so blue color represent a highly 
decrease deprivation, and red color represent highly uh, increased deprivation. Uh, so when people moved out of London, uh, most of their social deprivation decreased, uh, which means their living uh, conditions or social status improved when they moved out of London to other areas in uh, Great Britain. Uh, on the contrary, when people moved from uh, other areas into London, uh, their social deprivation uh, increased a lot, which means they become uh, poor when they moved into London, uh, especially for the areas in the uh, east of London. Right, uh, so next Bing will take over uh, the latter part. Okay, thanks, Ming. So next, I will introduce our second ongoing case, which is use LCR data to understanding residential mobility. The core aim is to understand residential mobility in terms of the flow side change. So here I list four data sites used in this second case study, and I will introduce them one by one. Let's start with LCR data. Here is one thick example to show you how the LCR data look like. And this is the OD flow in LCR data, which relating to the UPRN and with uh, uh, 891. So the second data we use is OS address based data size. I personally believe this is the most powerful address information data in UK. It's covered all the common use address system in the UK. And here I only list the two address system we use in this research. So which is the UPRN and the Royal Mail address. The second data set we use is domestic EPC data. Here it gives you a screenshot of how the domestic EPC data look like. It uh, overall covers over 100 variables. I just highlight the place we we use in this data set. So on the left side, you can see it has the registry date of this EPC certification. And, uh, and it also have the property address. And on the right side, this is the core information we want to get from the domestic EPC, which is the total flow area. Next slide, please. So in case you didn't familiar with what is domestic EPC data, here is a screenshot from the UK government website. So the energy performance certification are needed whenever a property is built, sold, rent, and it's valid for 10 years. There is one thing I wish to mention. So we can download the domestic EPC data from the MACLG website, and there is a license you need to sign with it. And uh, currently, if you download data, it's the version six. And also, this is the version we use in this second case study. So it totally uh, has over two, uh, 20 million records. The first data set we use is land registry price pay data. So this is the open transaction price pay data in England since 1995. So it almost records all the transactions, all the transactions. And you can see clearly it's not only record the transaction price, it also have the detail of the address information. Next slide, please. So here I list the address information in the data set which I introduced above, and you can see clearly. So the address information did restore differently in this data set, and this will cause a problem to conduct a linkage between them. So that's why we create a too complex uh, data linkage based on address and to combine these three data as one. And in this case, and we can uh, have the, we can get add in the flow size information in the LCR data. Before we do the linkage, we first capitalize all the address information from the domestic EPC data, as you can see in the middle part. And the next slide, I will show you the whole working flows. So the whole aim is we want to have a better understanding of the residential mobility associated with flow side change. And we start with to link the domestic EPC data with land registry price pay data based on a complex address based matching. And then we further create another address based matching to link the UPRN information from the OS address base. Once we got this real reference EPC data, we can directly link back to the LCR data based on the UPR information, which will result in the LCR 2.1. Uh, 
That's five minutes left, Bin. Yeah. With these ideas, I, I can show some re neat result. So once we conduct this linkage, when we are able to have ideas of for, for any given UPRN, what kind of property size of it? Here is a one of fake unique uh, original UPRN, which end is one end with 891. And you can see the floor size is 77 meter squares. And the meanwhile, we also can know what are the, what are the floor size for the destination UPRN in the LCR data. Uh, it's so clearly this is 130 meter squares. And what it means here, it means this residential move house and it move for a big house. So with this kind of information, we are able, we are currently able to get six million uh, UPR information to show this flow. And uh, here is a map to show you how it looks like in a region base. So the, the, the residential coming from the same region, I color in the same colors. And uh, you can see clearly 20% of this movement from, is from London and the 90% from the Southeast and there are 16% from the East of England. And the, the rest six regions only occupy 10%, I mean less than 10%. And what's more, we also can have a look at this flow, how to look at in a given regions. And here I showed example in London. It's obvious that major of this flow I mean, occurs within the London, which is occupy 69%. And also there is some um, a major part of the Londoners move out to Southeast and East England. And what's more, we also can have a look at uh, this movement, how it look like, I mean, outside its home region. And here is an example. Next slide, please. So in this talk, which uh, me and I show you uh, the how to use LCR data to understanding the social and residential mobility. And this is just ongoing research. We will try to launch the final result in CDRC's housing event in June. And if you are interested, you can have a look at it at that time. And uh, uh, currently we are trying to extend our work in two dimensions. So for the social, mobi social mobility part, which May has just introduced, we're aiming to extend analysis uh, in terms of the social mobility associated the deprivation part from England to the whole Great Britain. And the uh, May currently is uh, adding in the geo demographic index information in the LCR data. So which are able to have a look at how the social mobility change associated with demographic change. And for the residential mobility, which I just can't introduce, uh, we will conduct this research in Great Britain. And all these two research will update to 2020s based on the, the, late, the, the new LCR data, which created by the Justin in the nearby sessions. And what's more, uh, for the residential mobility, we are, we are planning to add in the Drupal data to enrich the tiny information, which means is we, are, we will have understanding of the residential mobility, not only in terms of the floor size, but also in terms of tenues. Unless all of them, thanks for your listening. A really interesting data set from a GIS research point of view. I think it's really exciting that uh, you, you can make these connections and that you can extract more information uh, from uh, the, the sort of combination of data sets than you would be uh, from either one. But I just always worry from the citizen's point of view about the uh, data protection issues. Um, you know, what we want to do as GIS professionals, GIS researchers, is to take data set A, data set B, combine them together and produce some uh, interesting uh, result, a, a new data set that tells us more than the, the, the component parts. Of course, that's exactly what uh, the data protection laws are there to prevent us doing. Um, so do, you, do either of you have any comments on, on these issues and uh, how we... Uh, want to be careful uh, with these sorts of questions. Uh, thanks, Bruce. That's really a good point. Uh, so to avoid uh, the uh, data issues, so for example, as you mentioned, uh, the data protection, the uh, privacy protection issues. Uh, so we have uh, uh, tried to, uh, so uh, the data we use is secure data. And when we try to uh, output the data from uh, the secure environment, uh, we have to ensure uh, 
no and uh, not any individual level in, uh, information uh, has been uh, output. So uh, that means all the data we used uh, has been aggregated at uh, different scales. So for example, uh, LSOA or MSOA or local authority or uh, larger regions. So uh, we won't use any individual levels for our analysis. So just uh, we just uh, to make sure that the data is uh, cover every uh, population, but we won't use, uh, we won't just focus on individual level data. Okay, no, I think that reassures us in terms of uh, what uh, you and CDRC will do with the data. Maybe we're still slightly worried as to what's possible to do with the data, but uh, anyway, that's good. Uh, Nick Behrman is happy to add his two pennies worth uh, in terms of uh, CDRC data. Um, I, I'll just add a couple of general bits, but if you want anything more specific, feel free to ask. So just to say, I'm a CDRC data services manager. So I, I help academics access these secure data sets. And for working with secure data, like we've seen May and been doing, uh, they have to apply through the process and go through their university's ethical uh, process. And then we also have a, a review process at CDRC with two external academics asked to review the data the proposal and our uh, research approvals group. Uh, we have an external chair for that and she also reviews the, the proposals. Then we have the secure data system to, to ensure that the uh, processing is all taken within a secure data environment. So this is all done in uh, UCL's data safe haven and any exports of data are only allowed at aggregate levels. And we have uh, rules and procedures to ensure that no individual data gets uh, extracted. And in terms of what can be done with data, you know, this, this is a really important question. Uh, we have posted a, what we call a, uh, a transparency notice for all of the data sets that we host. So that's the example for the linked consumer registers. So uh, it's a PDF that explains what the data is and what it can be used for. And that's available for anyone to take a look at. So, you know, most people are listed on the linked consumer registers. Um, and there's a, as a part of the GDPR rules, we are allowed to do research with that uh, if we provide this transparency notice. So there's no need for a kind of formal opt-in from everybody on the database because it's not practical. You know, we could not get opt-in uh, agreement from all, you know, the entire UK population. So as a, we made the transparency notice available. So if people have questions, there's details on there. And, you know, I'm happy to take more detailed questions on that or anything else that, that we've discussed. Great. No, that's really interesting, Nick. And it's clear that um, CDRC have thought this through um, in the policy sense, the practical sense and the ethical sense. So that, 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 that's very important. Um, yeah, I guess you know, our, our, our residual worry that, of course, we can do nothing about is that uh, government uh, can uh, do all sorts of interesting things with uh, following similar procedures with the data. And uh, it possibly uh, scares those of us who are a little bit concerned about uh, privacy and such like that uh, you, you, what, what you guys have done as researchers can, can then be copied by government. And government, of course, don't have to pay any attention to uh, data protection legislation. Uh, so they find more and more more and more and more out about us but uh, that's a debate for a, a, another day I think.